I'm gonna give it a, a minute to let a few people get on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I praise you, God. Thank you, Lord. I praise you today, God. I lift your name up today, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my God. I praise you today, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bobo shadariya da da o shikere da 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 o shikere da 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 I have to tell myself as I was studying it yesterday and today, the Lord took a turn on it and um, he showed me a different, a different thing, which I know it's the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to let him lead today. I have a lot and we're definitely not going to be able to cover it all. So um, we'll just do what the Lord is leading. So if you want to agree with me in prayer real quick. My God, we come before you today, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world today, Father. Every lie from the pits of hell today, Father, that comes against this word, Lord, I take authority over it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, my God, as your heir today, Father. My God, I ask that you move upon your living word today, Holy Ghost, that you breathe and your breath heals. You breathe through your word and the captive is set free today, Father. My God, your word, my God, is alive and active, Lord. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. I penetrate through every lie of fear, every distraction, every crowded heart that comes to hear what the word of the Lord says. I ask you penetrate them today, Lord. I ask you speak to them today, Father. And I ask God that you show your glory here on this line, Lord. They didn't come to hear men. They come to hear you. So I give myself to you, Lord. And I feel your presence all over me. So I ask God that everyone that's watching and listening, Lord, gets a touch from you. I praise you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. When I got into this word, you shall know this is a very familiar parable. And it's in the book of Matthew 7. And it starts in verse 24. And I'm reading from the Passion Translation because I like the way that it's reading out. And this is Jesus talking. And he's talking to uh, his disciples. He's talking to a crowd and it's a parable as you notice it'll say it's likened to a man and as we know about parables the lord does the same today he'll use whatever was going on in that time to help take the word even though the holy spirit makes the word come alive parables we can relate to and at this time he's talking about building and jesus says in verse 24 7 24 everyone you see the first thing everyone who hears my teaching and applies it to his life can be compared to a wise man who built his house on an unshakable foundation. And it says, when the rains fell and the flood came, the fierce winds beating upon his house, it stood firm because of its strong foundation. Verse 26, but everyone, here we go again, everyone who hears my teachings and does not apply it to his life can be compared to a foolish man who built his house on sand. 
And when it rained, and it rained, and the flood came with the wind and the waves beating upon his house, it collapsed and was swept away. If you read any other version, it will say the house built on the sand, great was its fall. But I like this version because it says it was swept away. As you see my title, I put rebuild and restore. And as I was praying last night, the Lord convicted me because listen, it's very easy to point fingers and it's very easy as the word says to take, um, not take the log out of our own eye and go to our neighbor's speck in their eye. It's very easy to take this word and point fingers and not apply it to our own life. But I want you to pay attention to what Jesus is saying. He said, everyone who hears. So we have two different houses here and we have two different people. The one man is called a wise man and the one man is called a fool. What are they doing? They're both building something. They're both having storms come in their life. It doesn't say that on the outside that their houses looked any different. It doesn't say anything about the storms being any different. All it says is when the storms come, it was the foundation that stayed. And as the Lord spoke to me this morning, as I was, to be honest, I'm just going to speak to you from my heart because I know what the Lord wants me to do. I've been grieving in my spirit because the Holy Spirit, you know, he's a, he's a person. He grieves and sin grieves him. And even with my own life, it's very easy to build a foundation on sand. It is very easy to build our life and to build our home and to build the way we live here on something that does not have a firm foundation. It's very easy to fall into this trap. That's why I want to take this word and I don't want to just point fingers, but I want you to feel the Holy Spirit that convicts us because listen, the word is meant to be applied to ourselves first before we apply it to anyone else. And as I read this, the Lord showed me the only difference between these two men was one that was doing the word was wise. It is not enough for us to hear the word and not apply it to our life. As we know, you cannot separate Christ from the word. You cannot separate God from his word because why? He is the living word. This is the breath of God. The word become flesh and dwelt among us. There's no separation. So if we want to have a foundation, and what does a foundation do? It is a start. When there, I don't know nothing about building, but as I was reading last night, I was trying to study a little bit about building houses and all this. And it says that a foundation is a starting point. You're not going to go lay something on something that does not have a foundation that's not going to stay because what's going to happen? It's going to sink. And it says that in order for like a building to go higher, it's got to go deeper. It's got to have a deeper foundation. And I started thinking about how the word we build upon, it says precept upon precept. And as we apply the word, we get built. And as you know, the word for build actually means edify in the word. So we edify ourselves, we edify other people by the foundation of following the word. Listening to the word is good, yes, but we want to do the word. That is the only difference between these two men. Doers of the word, not just hearers of the word. And I like that it says that this wise man built his house on an unshakable foundation. Because why? He's doing what the word says. What does the word of God say? That heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will stay. See, this is the thing about building our house on sand. As I was praying, you know, it, sound, it might sound silly to you, but God will speak to you in the natural. We just come back from the beach like a week ago. And um, as we were sitting on the sand, I noticed that when you put something on sand, first of all, it's not a good foundation. You would never be able to have like a, a house or something because it's not rooted. It's not rooted in to a foundation. When you put something on sand, what happens? It takes a shape, does it not? It conforms to the shape that is put on it. Let's say you have kids and you have a bucket and you're putting the bucket on the sand or you sit down on the sand or you put a chair. It's going to take a shape of what is put on it. 
And this is what the Lord revealed to me. When we build our house, first of all, house means a lot of different words in the word. A house can mean your house, your life. It can also mean, you know, we are the house of God. We are the temple of God. But the one I liked it the most was your descendants. House is the, your descendants. Who's going to come after you? And as I thought about this sand, you know, if we don't have our foundation in the unshakable foundation of God's word, what God says about us, guess what happens? We start building our foundation of ourselves on people's opinions. We start building our life on the foundation of something that takes on a form or something that has no root. And as you know, sand, when a wind hits it, it gets sifted, does it not? It moves. And I thought about how we could leave what we do here now is going to be left for our children. It's going to be left for our descendants. It's going to be left for whoever comes behind us. As we build upon the cornerstone and we build our life on the word of God that never changes. As we listen and we obey the word, we are leaving a firm foundation for our kids. Because if not, listen to me, the sweeping away is very easy. I know because I lived it. The sweeping away and building your home, building your house, building your family on things that's temporary, that has no foundation, which, you know, today would be a pattern of the world, would be, um, let's use social media for an example. Let's use, you know, um, how we compare ourselves to celebrities. Let's go with popularity. Let's go with our looks. Let's go with what we own here when we're here on earth. That is a foundation that has no root to it. And why? Because what happens when we leave this earth and we either make heaven or hell our home, the only thing that is staying with us and following us into these two places is either our works or the things we did for the Lord here that was built on the foundation of God. Everything else is going to be swept away. It has no root to it. It's decaying, as the word says. Everything we see is temporary. Everything unseen is eternal. And when we do the word, we're building on the eternal kingdom of God. We're building on something that cannot be shaken. We're building upon the rock that when we leave, it's going to be left behind for our descendants. It's a pattern for them to follow. But everything else, you know, um, my girl sitting here with me, I don't want to keep using her for an example, so I'll, I'll use myself. She's at an age, you know, and I come through a season of my life that you get so more concerned about what people say about you, opinions of you, and what happens. We put ourselves out there on social media. I'm not coming against social media. Listen, I understand this is a very easy thing to fall into, but what happens when we post things and let's say we don't get as many likes as we want, or we tell someone something and we don't get, you know, the applaud of people guess what happens? That's a foundation that's going to be swept away. It's neither here nor there. And if we don't know who we are in Christ, we can't build upon the rock. If we're building our life and our house upon people's opinion that's like sand that gets sifted, it's here and then it's there, it never adds the true foundation of what God wants to do in our life. It's something that we have to recognize that we get our identity in God what God's word, this whole thing is about applying God's word to your life and doing what the word of God says. And the word of God calls us beloved. It calls us loved. It called us favor. It says that he gives us the strength to listen to the word and do the word because we have the Holy Ghost now inside of us that can teach us. He's the leader of all truth. He shows us which ways to walk in. We have everything we need to build upon the firm foundation. But the way I like this is because it said, the rain come and the storms come on both the houses. And you know, sometimes when we're walking with the Lord, when a storm hits us, it shows what our foundation is. It shows what we are truly rooted in. Because what happens is sometimes we think we're walking with God and we think we're going the right way and we think we're rooted. And guess what happens? A storm comes and it shows what was definitely rooted in our heart. You know, sometimes we'll go through a season in our life where we're waiting for God to move and a storm will keep coming. It says here the storm and the wind kept coming. It wasn't just one, but it kept coming and it was shaking the foundations of the house. God reveals what's hidden in your heart and what you're building your life upon with storms and with trials. 
because it shows us what we need to be rooted in. It shows, look, if we're going through a trial, all this stuff that can be swept away, all this temporary stuff, people's opinions, different all this stuff, it doesn't do us no good, does it? But there's hope because I like how it says the house that was on the sand got swept away. And the reason why I liked this version is because, listen, when we're building upon the wrong thing, because the Lord loves us and he's merciful to us and his heart is that no man should perish. His heart is that we live our life here to glorify him. His heart is that we go from glory to glory, preparing for heaven. What happens is when we're in God, when we're seated in Christ, because he loves us, when we start building upon the wrong things, the word of God says he chastens those he loves. It's part of a sonship because we're his children and your own children, you want what's best for them. You don't want to see them hurt. You don't want to do, let them do the wrong things. But sometimes they have to learn by experience and that's what God does with us. He'll let us build and build and build upon the wrong thing and he'll let the storms come and sweep it all away because guess what? It was never eternal. It was never something that we was going to be able to build upon by doing the word. So he'll let things be swept away. But what the best thing about this, the reason why I love this version is because when something's swept away and it's swiped clean, there's nowhere to go but up from there. There is nowhere to go but up to move up and learn the things of God. Sometimes the Lord will let us take everything that we, we strive in the flesh to have and we, we built in the flesh to have. He'll, he'll take it from us and he'll let it be swept away so we can get rooted in him, so we can learn to get to know him, so we can build upon the true things of God, the word of God. He'll let it be swept away. So it's okay. Listen, I have my testimony I can't share it enough. I built my house upon the sand. I built my house upon everything that was of the flesh. And it was swept away. But it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Because it got me to build on the foundation of God. It got me to get to know the Lord. It's okay to let your to make a mistake and fall. And then to get back up. Because what happens? We start rebuilding on the cornerstone. And that's why I want to call this message to rebuild and restore. You know... God is a restorer. He is a rebuilder. And long as you have the cornerstone in your life, long as you know him, and sometimes the storms have to show you who the true cornerstone is. Sometimes the storms have to show you you can't walk by your flesh and you can't uh, build your, your life upon what you feel or the world's opinions or the world's uh, patterns because it's not going to last. We need to have a root in the God's word and we need to be able to apply it because when a storm comes, we have to hold on to it. We have to have an anchor. And the good thing about trials is each and every time you go through a trial, you go through a tribulation, it's another level that is you're growing in the word of God. You're growing and dependent upon God. It's another foundation laid upon the cornerstone. And I was talking to my girl last night and we was talking about Peter. And uh, as I was reading... I love Peter because Peter, I feel like you can relate to the um, Apostle Peter. I feel like he's the one, you know, he was the one that denied Christ three times. He was the one that, you know, he thought he had the true foundation of God because he said he would never deny Christ. And he said he would never walk away from the Lord. And as we know from his story, he did because he was rooted, even though he knew God. Listen, it says everyone who hears. So this is for the church. This is for people that's listening to the word of God, but it's for the people that's doing the word is what makes the difference. That's what makes us wise when we do the word, not just hear it. Peter was walking with Christ for three and a half years. He's seen Christ do all these miracles and he knew who the Lord was because he got a revelation. But when it come, push came to shove, what happened? Peter was the one that denied him. Peter was the one that had to get this foundation that he built swept away because I love how the Lord said to Peter he said Satan has asked to sift you like wheat but I have prayed for you Peter that when it happens your faith might fail not fail you and you'll go and turn and strengthen your brother so we know that the foundation that Peter had in himself 
the foundation that Peter thought that he had of the Lord had to be sifted and it had to fall. He had to fall in order to become the rock. As we know, Peter means the rock. It means the, the pebble. He had to fall and realize what the true foundation of God. He had to learn the hard way, like a lot of us have to do, to build upon the rock of the word and not go by what our feelings, what this... This sand, this house that's built in the sand, this temporary thing, we have to go by what the word says. And I love that the Lord, he's the master builder. You know, he's the firm foundation. When it's talking about the unshakable foundation, that is rock, that is Jesus Christ himself. He's the cornerstone. He's the thing that doesn't fade away. He's the word. So when we built upon that, when the storms come, we might be like Peter. We might fall for a season. We might be sifted for a season. But we can get back and strengthen our brother. We might have our house tour. We might have, you know, this temple that we're building here on earth ripped away from us. But guess what? Then we're the best ones to go back and strengthen our brother because we can become new. We can build a new foundation on the cornerstone. And I love how the Lord was talking to his disciples in the book of Luke. And it says that he was talking about building his church. And he said, on this rock, meaning himself, he is the rock, he is the sure foundation, he is the cornerstone, he is the rock of eternity. On this rock, I will build, he's building his church. And it says, and the gates of hell, Hades, will not prevail against it. And as I was praying last night, the Lord showed me how, see these gates to Hades, what is the gates would be for? The gates would be to keep the church out. It's an offense. No, we think, listen, the enemy would love to have all of us perish. He would love to, he only comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So he's never put those gates. Them gates is not there to keep sinners out. It's there to keep the church from prevailing against the works of the enemy. Because listen, Christ came, as you see, I have a picture behind me, and it's a lion of Judah. I put that behind me because, yes, Jesus come as the lamb for us to save us, but he also comes as the lion of Judah. And it says he came to destroy the works of the devil. And that's what he came, and that's what he done. And Jesus said, on this rock, I will build my church. We are the church. We are the living stones. We are the pebbles like Peter that comes from the cornerstones. And we're not meant to sit back and let the enemy come to us because we are the church that is built upon the rock that the gates of hell will not prevail against. How do you get that in your spirit? How do you start rising up? As the word says that the kingdom of God suffers violence, but the violent take it by force. How do you get your identity that you are the church that God has built and the gates of hell will not prevail. We go to the enemy's camp. Do you understand? Satan is defeated. He is under our feet because God, Jesus, defeated him. We are his church. We are his body. He is under our feet. But what he wants to take from us is our identity in Christ so we don't go and prevail against him. And how does he take our identity? He takes it when we build our house upon the sand. He takes it when we build our house upon the temporary things that's sifting like sand, sifting like wheat, opinions of others, temporary things that's going to fade, patterns of the world. But see, he knows when we root ourselves in the word of God, hallelujah, God, I feel your spirit. When we hear the word and we apply the word, we are becoming the church that was built upon the rock. We get our identity in Christ, not this sifting houses that's going to be tore away when storms come. No, what God says, what he says to do. And listen, he tells us what to do out of love. He don't tell us what to do to hurt us. It's a guide for us and it's not you know what makes it hard to listen and do the word of God? Our flesh. Our flesh fights against this. But see, we have a spirit that's inside of us. We have the Holy Ghost that teaches us the word. He strengthens us. He shows us how to live the word. And we don't live the word because we're religious. We live the word out of obedience because the word of God says, those who hear my commandments and do them are the ones that love me. We love the Lord because what he's done for us, who he is, so for that reason, we obey. 
and it keeps us safe. It keeps us from when the storm comes that we have, we're rooted in Christ, that the storms may come. Yes, they will come, whether you're building on God or you're not, but your foundation will stay. Your foundation, what you built upon, will be left to your descendants. It'll be left unto them. It will strengthen you and it will strengthen your whole family, your whole house, your church, if you can do the word of God. And I'm going to close out. I don't want to keep you too long. So, um, my God, I thank you today, Lord. I thank you, my God, that as I look on here, my God, I can see women on here. And as I see this word, it says, the man that built his house upon the rock. My God, your word says in Proverbs 14, 1, my God, that a wise woman built her house. And a foolish one tears it down with their own hands today, Father. Help us get a clear vision of your word. Help us get rooted into your word that never can be shaken. Lord, that your word is alive and active today, Father, that it never changes, my God. Your truth, my God, never changes, God. But what changes is the foundations of the world. What changes, my God, is these patterns and these opinions. It's like sand, my God. Help us, God. Help us, Jesus. Build our life upon the rock. God, you are the rock. You are our foundation, Lord. Where would we be without you, my God? You went before us, Lord. You become our cornerstone. So you could build your church here on earth, Father. Help us be separated, my God. As your word says, come out from among them, Lord. Help us, my God, be the city that's set up on a hill that cannot be hidden, Lord. Help us, Lord, build our life unto your glory today, Father. Help us not be selfish, Lord, and foolish, God, like this foolish man, my God. And build temporary things, Lord. But help us build on the firm foundation, which is you. Help us be doers and not hearers, God. I pray for everyone on this line today, Father, as your word penetrates them, my God, and speaks to them, my God, and edifies us, God. Help us, Lord. We need you, God. We need you more than ever right now. We need you in this world, my God, as we are your church, Lord. We are building a foundation for you. We're preparing the church and edifying, my God, for your second coming. Help us be wise to do it. And I plead your blood over us, your blood over this word, your hedge of protection, your angels around each one of us, God. And I thank you, God. And I give you the glory for every good thing. You are the one, my God, that is a living spirit inside of me. And I praise you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you. Bye.